Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another video on the Leviathan box set. This time I'm going to be focusing on the Ballistus Dreadnought. I am a colossal fan of Dreadnoughts, including the new Redemptor chassis. Uh, so far I have five. After today I'll have six of the new Redemptor chassis Dreadnoughts fully painted up for various armies. And uh, yeah, I'm excited that there is another variant out of the Ballistus one. So I'm going to focus on that today. Get some um, 3D printed resin symbols on it to uh, represent my flesh tears and then gonna paint it up in that scheme for you guys in today's video. Before I get into it, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to continue doing what I'm doing, so a huge thank you from me. If you are interested in becoming a patron, the benefits you receive are access to a private Discord server and an extra video every single week, so that's 52 extra videos a year from me. I think that's pretty cool. So if you're interested, there are links below. Okay, without further ado, let's get painting a Ballistus Dreadnought. And here is the new Ballistus Dreadnought in all its glory. It is a magnificent miniature. I may be slightly biased because I love Dreadnought so much, but that's just me. I 3D printed some more um, Flesh Terrors emblems out to apply to tanks and stuff like that. So obviously I'm going to stick some onto the side and front of my Dreadnought. Just a tiny little touch, just add a little bit more flair. Same way I've been printing out all the icons for all the shoulder pads for the Indomitus set, and I will be doing for the Leviathan set as well. After this, the miniatures got sprayed like everything else in the army. They got sprayed black, and then they got a heavy zenithal of grey seer over the top. And from here, we're going to be throwing on all the base coats pretty much with contrast. Lots of people ask me, um, seeing how I do quite a heavy layer job later on on some miniatures, what is the point in doing the contrast stage if you're going to paint over it entirely? And my answer to that is I generally tend to use contrast paints as in a very quick and effective way of base coating your miniature. That darker tone that you need to go for, like if I was to do this by hand, I would probably be using, say, corn red for the armor panels. And it would only take me maybe half an hour, 40 minutes to paint all of the army pa armor panels in red. Whereas the contrast takes maybe five minutes. Then we're going to wash it down and then we're going to layer it up and all that kind of bits. You may not see an awful lot of the contrast before that, but you do need to base coat miniatures. So this works a treat. It's, for me, a very, uh, like I said, quick and efficient way of doing it. And I think the, the trick to getting through your backlogs and getting more things painted is, of course, painting faster. And I think contrast is uh, made for such things. So, for instance, I used black Templar contrast to block in all the bits that I want to be metallic or need to be black on this dreadnought. After that, I simply dry brushed it with lead belcher. That's it. You're going to get an absolutely stunning looking kind of worn down, oil slicked, metallic metal color, which is the perfect for the chassis of any Dreadnought or any Night Titan or anything like that. If I were to just go solid silver, it would just be that solid silver look, which is, like I said, I try and avoid things looking like a toy by adding kind of texture to them. Flesh Terrors Red was then brought in to put that first coat on all the panels like I talked about. And as you can see, if you load up your brush quite heavily, and push it around, it goes far and it stays relatively smooth. And like I said, even that little bit there, getting in around that kind of half moon kind of I don't know, connection point for that in the storm bolter. If I was to just use corn red on a paintbrush, I would be painting that little bit for 30, 40 seconds, trying to get in around all the nooks and crannies with a bigger brush, some red contrast one pass and it's completely covered in red paint i just think it's 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 the way forward so i'm going to continue on and get all of the red and black paint onto the ballistas dreadnought from here we're going to jump over to corn red just for the central teardrop on the um the two symbols that i put on this miniature i have to be a little bit more precise with this because the the saw blade stays that kind of creamy white color. So I tried to do that with a red contrast paint, it would just go everywhere and be a disaster. From here, we jumped over to the metallics and we used Retributor Armor Gold and Lead Belcher to paint in some of the motif areas. So this obviously has a Crux Terminatus um, on one side of its uh, carapace. And then it's got some extra scroll work and some other bits and pieces that I'm going to hit with Retributor Armor Gold. The winged Aquila across its front I'm going to do that in Lead Belcher, as that seems to be the style of Flesh Tears. Their chest emblems seem to be a dark metallic, which I've done on all the other miniatures I've done so far. And obviously want to keep that theme going through. 
Agaras Dunes was used as the base coat for all of the uh, purity seals. Not the wax part, the paper parts, obviously. And on this dreadnought in total, there's six purity seals. Um, scattered about three on the gun and then three spat around the main body. Try and find them all as quick as you can. <laughs> it's like playing Where's Wally with purity seals sometimes. And you always tend to miss one and have to go back and paint it up. Volopus Pink was then used for the wax of the purity seals. I should really stop showing you guys how to paint purity seals in videos as there's a million different ways to do them and I have to show you how to do them in every single video. I should just do a how to paint purity seal video and refer to that every time I do it. But with all of those bits and pieces then applied, that is all the base coats done on it and it's time to shade the miniature. And for this, I'm gonna use Null Noil as it's the color I've been using for my entire Flesh Term Terror's army so far. And wanting to keep all the tones matching and make sure that he he sits in the army beautifully i'm going to stick with it so null and oil across the entire miniature all the different parts and then while that's drying i'm going to sh um, put a sloppy coat of the kind of martian base that i put on the miniature and uh, from that i actually used the ak firelands um, texture paste that was very kindly sent to me by air hobbies As you can see, it's not exactly the smoothest coat. If I was going to leave it at this stage, I would have taken more time and made it smoother. Since I knew I was going to be painting over it, I could go a little bit quicker. And those splodges are easily going to get touched up and painted over with the coat of corn red. And you may be thinking, well, if he's going to be putting a coat of corn red on anyway, why didn't he just use the that as the base coat? The corn red the coat that I'm putting on now is by no means going to be full coverage. All the little nooks and crannies and um, all the little separating joints and stuff anywhere where shadow is supposed to go i'm not going to hit with the uh, corn red that's going to give me that really nice effect so you can see even there the bottom panel and the kind of midriff panel you see the dark line running along it that's me choosing not to paint it in i think we're starting to get somewhere on this dreadnought now corvus black was then the color used to do basically the same thing again but on all the parts of the miniature that need to be black. So the gun casings of the storm bolters, the shoulders um, on the gun, basically the armor panels that go on the gun. Because remember, the infantry of Flesh Terror has shoulder pad, head, and power pack stay uh, black, and the rest is uh, red. So I tried to emulate that a little bit. So I use the chest um, guns, the shoulder guns, and I decided to give the covers going over the exhaust ports on his back black as well, just to tie that all in together. And make it feel like it's the correct way to paint a flesh terror's dreadnought even though if you google it a million people have a million different ways of doing it but i quite like the end result when i did it so i'm happy enough to uh, recommend this to you guys the ballista dreadnought is an absolutely fantastic addition to the space marine arsenal we had these back in third fourth fifth sixth edition um so i'm delighted to see them back in action in redemptor form and with the traditional weapons as well the las cannon and the missile launcher i shall be hunting down many enemy tanks with this so now the tank or the dreadnought was looking a little too clean so i used my standard sponging technique which is i just pull a little bit of case foam out and i load it up with a bit of black paint wipe out the majority of it off and then i do some kind of um sponging technique or stippling technique across the hull with black and then with lead belts or silver and it gives you a really nice weathered and chipped effect across the hull first the black and now we're going to move over to the silver with the silver, I also like to kind of scrape it a little bit along edges and sharp corners, which will give you a few like little silver streaks, and um, which this thing is like, you know, banged its head or scraped itself, smashing its way through buildings or um, defensive positions uh, so get a better firing arc on something. And um, like these are definitely um, bullet magnets on the tabletop and in war zones. So they're going to have lots of small arms fire pattering off their hull, chipping that beautiful paint. After that, it was time to move over to all of the glowing parts of the miniature, so all the lenses. With that, I hit a coat of pure white. And then later on, we'll come back with a contrast. Any bright pink you like to highlight up the wax seals on the purity seals. And any kind of bony color for the kind of parchmenty white color for the parchment itself off the purity seal. From that, we went back to Lead Belcher and highlighted up the chest eagle. And did a few spot highlights on all of the gold. Nothing crazy, just making it stand out a little bit. Warp lightning, a bright green contrast, went into all of the lenses that I want to glow. And you can, of course, depending on what color you want yours to glow, you can change that around by just swapping out that contrast color for blue or yellow or whatever you want to do. Here is the finished 
Dreadnought, and I must say I am absolutely delighted with the finished result. I will show you a couple of high-res images to finish it off, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys are looking forward to the Leviathan week starting on the 26th of this month also where I'll be finishing off all the contents of the box I didn't get done in videos up until that point. So I hope you're also looking forward to that. And there we have it, one Ballistus Dreadnought painted up for my Flesh Terrors army. And I could not be happier. I think that was the most time-consuming, uh, most complicated miniature in the new box set. Of course, that depends on how complicated you make your Tyranid scheme. If you're putting a heap of effort into your Tyranids, then some of the big monsters in that set will obviously slow you down. But for me, this guy was definitely a hump that I'm glad I am now over. And he is complete. And then I can move on to kind of finishing Terminators and doing basic infantry again. Um, I really do need to take a picture of all five of my Redemptor, or six now of Redemptor Dreadnoughts painted up as one thing. I think that'd be very cool. And I can share with you guys in the near future. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. Subscribe to my channel if you are not already subscribed. Two thirds of people watching my video are not subscribed. And that's just a shame. So... Two seconds, hit that button, make me happy. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below and I'll get back to each and every one of you guys. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.